<coughs> this week we're talking about strategic planning. It's actually one of my favorite topics, probably just because I work in strategic planning for They might know what strategic planning is. No clue. Um, it's a process of identifying a desired future state from an organization that means to achieve it. Genius. <laughs> All right. You got a definition? I have my glasses on. <laughs> yeah, that's basically what I was going to say in so many words. <laughs> Any other definitions? About strategic planning. I have a quick video that talks about what it is, so we'll take a look at this very quickly. With healthcare issues frequently topping the news headlines, it's clear that the healthcare industry is being driven toward a transformation. The ability to quickly and proactively respond to change in the healthcare industry will likely be necessary to stay ahead of increasing demands. This will almost certainly require the successful implementation of technology to help reduce costs and improve the provision of healthcare services. Strategic business and technology planning with an enterprise architecture approach holds the key to becoming more agile, nimble, and responsive to industry change and transformation. IBM's approach is built around business analysis, planning, and execution. So what can business analysis help you do? Analyzing the entire organization from a business and technology perspective presents valuable insights into the risks and effects of change. And gives you an understanding of where you are today, where you want to be tomorrow, and how to proactively address and respond to new realities and demands in the marketplace. Analysis helps identify where operations are humming and where you can gain efficiencies. What if scenarios and predictive modeling help you recognize opportunities to streamline operations, reduce costs, and lower risks? This level of visibility into your enterprise enables you to more effectively meet demands while keeping an eye on the future. Through strategic and tactical business analysis and planning, you can build the bridge from responding to today's challenges to realizing tomorrow's opportunities and help prevent your organization from being in a reactive mode. When you prioritize better, enterprise-wide, you help with capacity planning and in identifying potential costs, effects, risks, and liabilities. Through more realistic cost-benefit and trade-off analyses, you are able to better align your business goals with upcoming demands. When you can rely on accurate, high-quality enterprise information, you can better manage dependencies and build roadmaps, and become more agile, nimble, and responsive to industry change. So, where do you connect the dots from strategy to delivery? It's all in the execution. This is where IBM brings business strategy, information systems and technology, business processes and data together to build comprehensive, actionable blueprints that drive the creation of optimized business solutions, services and processes where progress and compliance are tracked. Managing change and transformation is a challenge. Enterprise architecture management solutions from IBM can enable a more proactive response and a smarter approach to managing change and transformation in the healthcare industry. Log on to learn more. All right, so this was obviously geared towards IBM, but it had a lot of discussion about strategic planning. So what were some of the takeaways? Did you take away anything? Notice anything about the video? I know that when you're doing the um, strategic planning, you're always keeping an eye on the future. Yes, so very good. Um, strategic planning deals directly with futuristic planning, looking into the future, forecasting, predicting. Um, so you're absolutely correct. Any, anything else you caught from the video? 
So why is it why 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 is it important for us to to look into the future? Well, why does it matter? Yes. In healthcare, if we look towards the future, the first of all, the laws will be changed or new technology may come out. Like a long time ago, they didn't do invasive procedures, but now they do, which actually takes away from hospital stay time, which makes it better. Okay. So you're saying um, it will help us keep up yeah. with the changing trends and technology and stuff, mm -hmm. right? Okay. Anybody else? Why is it important for us to, why can't we just deal with things as they come on a day-to-day -day basis? Because uh, you can't predict the future but you can be ready for it. Right, so it helps us to be prepared. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Um, so strategic planning involves all those things, helping us to be prepared, looking out into the future. Um, and before I keep going, this is one of those, those conversations where you should probably take notes because this is directly related to your first project, group project. Um, so the process, there's a process. Um, you don't just sit down and say, all right, let's plan. There's, there's steps that you have to take. And some of those involve the following. Uh, number one, the SWOT analysis, which we'll talk about in a little bit more into detail in a few. Strategy identification and selection. Strategy tactical plans. Uh, the rollout and implementation. Monitoring and control and feedback. So these are basically the steps of the strategic planning process. Um, and we're going to go through each of these steps and, and explain more. This diagram is also in your text, um, but it shows you basically what I just explained. This is the steps of the process. So the first thing is the SWOT analysis. Um, next, you'll have the strategy identification and selection. Then the tactical plans, rollout and implementation, and then monitoring and control, which is basically related to the feedback. The first part of the process is the plan development, strategic plan development. And then the second half of the process is the actual execution. Um, so before we do anything within our plan, we have to take a look at our, our mission, vision, and values. Um, and each organization, whether it's clearly stated or not, will have these things. So the mission um, is basically, it explains why you're here, why you're in business. Um, so if you go to a website, a company website, maybe in the About Us section or the organizational history, somewhere in that area is where you will more than likely, not always, but more than likely find the mission, vision, and values. And the mission statement, examples of the mission statement might be to provide high quality care, to the citizens of Fayetteville, North Carolina, or to provide charity care for the underserved. Um, so that's basically how a mission statement is. So the mission statement tells the public our purpose. Why are we here? Why are we in business? Why are our doors open? What are we here to do? That's the mission statement. Um, then the vision statement identifies something in the future. So a vision statement might be to become the leading provider of orthopedic surgery in the state of North Carolina. Um, so the vision statement is more like a goal, something that we want to have in the future, something we want to become, something we're shooting towards. Um, and then the last thing um, are the values. And the values typically describe the organizational culture. Um, Sometimes you'll see the values on the organization listed as an acronym. So you, it might say CARE, and C might stand for compassion, and the A will stand for accountability, or something like that. But usually you'll see the values listed as an acronym, or you, they'll just have them listed out. They'll say integrity, compassion, respect. Um, but the values are all words that describe the organization's culture. Um, and so, one more time, mission, vision, and value, sometimes you'll see this listed as the MVV. Um, but why do you think, before we do anything else, we have to either, um, if we're already in business, we, we need to revisit this. If it's a new business, we have to create it. But either way, why would this be our first step? 
for the mission? All of them. Oh, all of them. This is our first step before we do anything else in our strategic plan process, yes. Purpose, who we're serving, what we're going to serve, identify the state or organization, the future, where we want to go, and how far, how long it's going to take us to get to that point. And then once we reach that goal, we need to set another one. Right, so this is, this is kind of like our roadmap. Um, if we just get in the car and we don't know where we're going, we'll end up anywhere. So we have to always know what our mission, vision, and values are before we get started to plan on anything because if we're planning to um, provide um, massage therapy services in our hospital, but our mission is to provide to the underserved, are they going to be able to afford spa services, medical spa services? So we have to make sure that everything that we do is in line with our mission, vision, and values. So before we plan anything, we have to come here first. And like I said, if it's an organization that's already existing, that already has this, we need to come back and remind ourselves of what this is. If it's a brand new organization, we have to create this first before we do anything else. Um, so this is the first thing we'll do. Once we do this, we can move on to our market assessment. It's the next step in our planning process. A market assessment um, is basically where we Take a look at all of these different categories to see what the status is. So number one, healthcare workforce. We want to assess the workforce, see where there may be any demands. Is there a high demand for nurses in our area? Is there a shortage for primary care doctors in our area? So we want to assess the healthcare workforce area. Uh, we want to assess consumers and payers. Has there been any dips in reimbursement from Blue Cross? Are we seeing a rise in uninsured patients? So we want to assess what's the status of consumers and payers. Next, uh, you talked about technology. So we want to assess technology. Are there any new uh, procedures that have come out that we may need to include in our hospital? Um, are there any new um, supplies or tools that are being used in the surgery department that we should consider getting? So we want to evaluate what's the status What's the trends in technology? Regulatory environment, we want to make sure that we are up to date on all the current laws, any new laws coming. Uh, we want to assess our regulatory environment. Competitive rivalry, we want to assess our competitors. What are they doing down the street that we may not be doing? Did they just hire a new doctor? Um, do we need to look to hire a doctor that will um, be able to compete with the new one that they just hired. So we have to assess what the people around us are doing. And the last thing is a market volume forecast. Uh, market volume obviously deals with the volume of patients and people we are seeing in our organization. So we need to assess, um, are we forecasting that we will double our volume next year? Are we predicting that it will fall, that will decrease? Um, so these are all things that we assess and they all fall under the market assessment. So that's the next step in our planning process. Why do you think we have to involve this? Why is assessment important? Why can't we just plan to, to do whatever it is we want to do? Like it puts everything in order and everything in perspective. Yeah, it puts everything in perspective. Um, if we're looking to start a new Lamaze class, uh, but we don't have enough staffing to do so, or if we're a shortage, then it's not going to go along with the plan that we have. So it, it does put things into perspective. It lets us know where we are, where things are currently. So, this is a, so assessment is important. Um, the next type of assessment we have to do is on ourselves. So we have to do an organizational assessment. Um, so we're looking again at our volume. Where's our volume? Um, and we have to define our service area. Does anybody know what service area is or what it means? Who are we gonna like? Are we only gonna serve Cumberland County? Are we only gonna serve veterans? Are we only gonna serve women? We have to determine who it is specifically. Who one. So you're close. What you said first was was pretty dead on when you said Cumberland County. So your service area is basically the area where your patients come from. Mm -hmm. um, some may have a larger service area. Typically, that's your rural organizations. They'll service a larger area because there's not as many hospitals around <coughs> in cities that have multiple facilities, they may have a smaller service area. But nonetheless, your service area is 
who comes to your hospital. And you can, tip it, you can uh, drill this all the way down to zip code and see how many people you have from you know, 28301, 28303. There's reports that you can run to, to give you that information. Um, and that's how you define your service area. We want to assess our financial condition. Are we losing money? Are we making money? Where are we? Uh, what's our operating margin? Are we in the red? So we have to assess our financial condition because we may not have the money to do this plan that we want to do. So we have to make sure we know what our financial condition is. Um, strategic performance. How have our plans gone in the past? Do we have a plan to open this you know, facility and it didn't work? Um, did we start a new service and it was really successful? So we want to look at our past strategic performance to see how we did. And then uh, the last thing we want to assess within our organization is our capabilities. Are we capable? Are we capable of offering this new service or um, building this new OR? Or is it just beyond our capabilities? Um, so basically the organizational assessment is us looking within. Uh, very similar to you doing a self-assessment and you looking at within yourself. Um, to see what your capabilities are. So we had the market assessment, now we have the organizational assessment. Um, this diagram is also from your book. It's giving you a depiction of the market assessment. So this is us in the middle, you can say, hospital. We have to look at the workforce, healthcare workforce, technology, regulatory environment, our laws, our competition, our competitive rivalry and our consumers and payers. So these are all the things we assess um, in our market assessment. Um, next, the next step is strategy identification and selection. And what falls under this are scenario exploration, assumptions, financial targets, resource matching, and outcomes. So basically what happens here, um, we've done our mission, vision, and values, we've assessed everything, now we have to identify our strategy. What are we going to do to get to where we're trying to get? So we may, so scenario exploration deals with playing out different scenarios to see wh what's the best. If you think in terms of your own decision making, sometimes in your mind you probably play out different scenarios to help you decide what to do, right? So it's very similar here. Uh, we're playing out different scenarios to see which one's going to work the best. Um, it may require us to make some assumptions. Um, here we have to be careful because this is risky, um, but to identify strategies, sometimes you do have to make assumptions. Sometimes it's unavoidable. Sometimes we may have to assume that even though we don't know what the volume is gonna be next year, we're gonna make an assumption that it's gonna be similar to what we had last year, or we're gonna assume it's gonna dope because of this new service. Um, financial targets are basically our financial goals, what we expect to make, or uh, what target we expect to hit as far as making money. Um, any resource matching that could happen from either our shareholders, um, maybe we're getting grants to do this project. Um, so all of those will fall under the resource matching. And then outcomes, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, basically what's gonna happen um, at the conclusion. Um, so tactical plans, anybody know what tactical plans is? I know I have some military people in here. Um, this is an example of a tactical plan template. So, um, somebody give me a, a goal. It could be any goal. But we want it to be a goal of a hospital. We'll use a hospital as an example. So any kind of goal? To be um, the number one in a like, gastric bypass okay. operation. Okay, the we can sleeve, the new and the sleeve. Okay, we can do that. We can use that example. So number one, so here, the first column is the goal. So our goal would be to become the number one um, facility providing gastric bypass. Is that all right? Say that. All right, so next column is key action. So what type of actions would we have to do to get to our goal? Make sure we have a person who knows what they're doing in that expertise. Person like a doctor. A doctor. Or so a team. Right. So a doctor and a team. So one of our key actions could be if we don't have that person, we have to recruit them. So we want to recruit recruit the top um, gastric bypass physician um, and, and put together a, a good team. 
Any other key actions? Uh, training. We have to train. Okay, so we may have to do some training. Key action will be training. Any others? Um, you might need to set up a whole new department also. You mean create create a, a new department? Mm -hmm. All right. Anything else? All right, so those are key actions. So we have to have a completion date, a target completion date. What are we going to say? Well, that would depend. We got to make up one. This is one of those places where we have to kind of use an assumption. 2016. Sorry. All right, you said two years, right? So you're saying the same thing. So we'll say January 1, 2016. Um, the key here is that with our tactical plan has to be very, very specific. So instead of just saying two years, we want to put a date. So January 1, 2016. That's very specific. Um, resources required. Now, you said training. Here we may want to put those resources, whether that be a video, a book, an instructor, um, a seminar. So those are the types of things that would go here. Um, as far as you, you said the, the doctor and the team. So resources may also include funds, because we got to have money to recruit, right? Mm -hmm. Can you think of any other resources that we might need to meet our goal? Okay. So the next column is dependencies. Dependencies is going to be what are some things that we must have to meet our goal? The surgeon. So we gotta have the surgeon. The budget the team. We gotta have money. Another one? Same. You said the same thing. Team. Got to have a team. Anything else? Proper medical equipment. Yeah, you got to have the equipment. We haven't talked about equipment yet. So we have to have, those are all the things we must have to meet our goal. Um, here, revenue projection. Um, so we know we need money, but we would have to figure out a number. How will we get the number? One, we would probably look at how much the surgery goes for, like, within the county. Okay, so we would want to see state, right? average, how much it goes for. What else? How much you pay your surgeon and your team? How are we going to find it? We'll research, right? right. We'll research. Right. So you're right. We need to know how much um, average surgeons get paid for this and the team that goes along. So once we do all of our research and we add those up, that's what will go here. So again, it has to be a number. We can't just say, you know, um, that's not a number we can just guess. That's not really one that we can assume. We gotta have some type of ballpark number from somewhere, which is where we'll do our research. And the last thing is the success metric. Success metric is something that we will use that will indicate or let us know that we met our goal. So what might we use as a success metric? Number of surgeries we did? Successful surgeries. Yes, because we can have 100, but if they aren't successful, then we're not going to be the top in the state. Did you say state? County. State. state. So, we, so we can use the number of successful uh, surgeries. Question. For that particular um, activity, wouldn't the success metric would be those key actions, which mean hiring of that doctor, wouldn't that be the success metric instead of you talking Well, about? that's a good question. Uh, but but when we're doing the success metric, we have to come back to what our goal was. Oh, you're going all Which was to be the okay. top gastric bypass facility in the state, right? So yeah, so when we're creating our success metric, we have to come back and remember what our initial goal was. And, and it was to be the top. And so yes, the number of successful surgeries will be one. But what else? I don't know how to say it, but make sure there's no male practice suits. Uh, yeah, we could add that. No male practice suits. What about our customers? How they feel them actually losing weight? So, because with the with the gastric bypass, she said patient satisfaction. Yeah. So we could you we could add that here. But will we need somebody to help them with like weight management and stuff like that too? Well, that's not really, that could be a, a separate goal, but it's not necessarily, we're not, we're not looking at the aftermath. Her goal said was to be the top 
facility providing gastric bypass. As long as we cover. Okay. Right? Um, there's one more here that we haven't said yet. Our goal was to be the top facility providing gastric bypass in the state. Now we have successful uh, surgeries. You would need to check the entire state. Yes. Yes, yes, overall. Yes. We have to make sure because we can have 50 successful surgeries, but if Duke had 100, are we the top? No. So we definitely need to have a success metric here that's related to us being ranked at the top as, as it compares to everybody else. We have to be realistic too now because Duke, that area, is much larger than here. Well, you're correct, but that's, that's we've already left goal. here. You have to be realistic here. We've already you're set right. our goal. Yeah, you're realistic in your goals. You're so, your goals. So when we create our goal, we have to be very specific and realistic. Because we can have something there. We can have something very unique that Duke doesn't have. Better equipment, better doctors. Yeah. And people might start coming down here. Aftercare. Mm -hmm. You know, it's a big it's a big facility, but nine times out of ten, they're not perfect at everything. No, but they have a teaching hospital up there, too. Which can be good or bad. It's a little bit of both. I don't like teaching hospital. Um, <laughs> but anyway, get back here. Does everybody understand how the tactical plan goes? The key things to remember here is they have to be very specific. And, and like she said, you do have to be realistic. Um, even in the other categories, not just in the goal, even down to your dependencies, you still have to be realistic with those two. So but the, the key take home here is that you're very specific when you're filling this out. But this is very helpful um, when you're trying to do your strategy identification. Um, so this is a, a good template to use. Um, the next step is rollout and implementation. So up until now, we've done a lot of planning, we've done our strategy. Um, this is where we actually roll it out, roll out our plan. And there's a few steps that go under the rollout and implementation. Number one, it's very important, the board approval. Um, everybody understand who the board is, right? Mm -hmm. Regardless of if we're uh, for-profit or non-profit, uh, non we're gonna have a, a governing board. A board of directors um, so before anything happens we have to get their approval right um, so if we stay with our same example and we say we're going to start a gastric bypass um, service at our hospital it doesn't just happen they have to say yes or no first um, can you think of any reasons why they might say no if they look at our plan and the plan that we already made just for minutes ago, and they look over it and say, well, it might not be realistic, or they may feel like it's not a good opportunity for them, or okay. the direction they go. So, so they may say, no, this isn't realistic. That's one reason they can say no. Anything else? Money. Money, money. We may, they may say we can't afford it. Anything else? May not have a good pool of doctors to pull from. Maybe they're saying, you know, the shortage of doctors in this area was. Okay, that's a good one. We're missing one. Important. Now we just talked about. We don't know where to No. We haven't done enough strategic planning. Okay. Maybe we haven't done enough planning. What else? Maybe not enough time. Maybe not enough time. This is why they're more than likely going to say no. Because we don't have the mission, the vision, and the value. If it does not align with our mission, our vision and values, they will not approve it. Um, so you have to make sure, um, again, when you're doing a plan that it's in line here. Otherwise, you're wasting a lot of time and a lot of resources you go through the whole planning stage and you expect the board to check off on it. If it's not aligned with our mission, vision, values, they're going to say no. So it's very important to understand that and how that works. Um, but all the other things you explained were also correct, but that's the number one. That has to check off before anything else. Does that make sense? Um, okay, so other things that fall under the rollout and implementation, you know, let's say our board said, yeah, it's a good idea. There's other things we have to do. Um, so. Think of the strategic plan as an umbrella, and underneath that, there's other smaller plans that have to be done as well. So you have an operating plan, a marketing plan, a facilities plan, a capital plan. So what do you think an operating plan is? 
day-to-day -day operation of the facility? Yeah, so day-to-day -day operation. So if we stay with our same example, we're opening up this gastric bypass uh, service. How are we gonna run it? Um, how many staff, how many uh, staff people are we gonna have? How many rooms is it gonna be? Are we gonna have two operating rooms? Um, how many patients are we going to, going to see a day? All that falls under the operating plan. Uh, the next plan is the marketing plan. What do, you, what do you think the marketing plan is? How are you going to tell people about the yeah. facility? How are we going to tell people about a new service? We can't, these things don't just happen. All these things take time and planning. So our marketing plan is going to be, are we going to run this on the radio, television? Are we going to um, advertise this on the internet? Are we going to hire a social media person to, to attract uh, customers? Are we going to pay for billboards? All those things fall under the marketing plan. So how are you going to promote this new service? Uh, facilities plan. What do you think this is? Okay, more specific. Um, the outlook of everything, uh, what things will be handled at, the emergency exit. Yeah, so she's right. So this is our facilities plan. We, can, we cannot, this is one that sometimes goes under look. We can't forget about facilities. Without a facility, we can't have a service. So we have to think about um, our emergency exits, again, how many rooms we're going to have, is there going to be plumbing in all of those rooms, what types of things related to the facilities do we have to plan for to have that new service. Um, and then the last plan is capital plan. Money. Money. She's right. This is our money one. Uh, so this plan deals with how are we going to fund this project, this service, or how are we going to finance this service, are we going to take out a loan? Um, bond. Yeah, a bond. So capital plan deals with the money and how we're going to basically finance this product or this service or whatever it is our plan is. So all these plans fall under the big strategic plan. Does everybody understand that? Is there any particular order for those? Um, typically, they're working simultaneously at the same time. You will have... Um, um, your facilities, you'll have a facilities department already in a hospital, so they will more than likely be working on this. Capital plan is going to be heavily um, worked on by the accounting and finance department. Your marketing department is going to be working on the marketing plan. Your operations managers are going to be working on the operating plan. Ultimately, the people at the top are going to see all of these, but in the initial stages, they'll be going on simultaneously because they'll be communicating with each other because there's some, some overlap. Like the facilities people will have to talk to the operating people. Um, the marketing people will have to talk to all of them, really, to be able to adequately promote the product. Mm -hmm. So they're all going on kind of at the same time. Um, as soon as we get that check from the board, um, then we do all these. Um, and then after all these are done, um, then we can actually roll out the service. Because we can't start providing the services if nobody knows about it. So all of these have to be done first, and then we can actually roll out the service. Now we can start taking patients. Does that make sense? Um, so this gives you kind of a, a illustration of what I just explained. So here we have our strategic plan, and then from there we have our smaller mini plans. Um, what I just explained. Um, does anybody have any other questions? So basically this is the process. We'll quickly review again. We start out. We assess the market. We assess ourselves. We identify our strategy. This was an example of us identifying our strategy and then we roll it out. And then after the rollout, we start, we open our doors, our patients come in. The last step is feedback or evaluation of the outcomes. So we did this plan, how did it go? Has it been successful? Are we now the top facility in the state? Are there areas that we can improve on? If it wasn't successful, when do we stop? Or do we continue it for another year to see if things will get better? So last step um, is feedback and evaluation of the process. Um, and that's basically all I have time for, but we pretty much cover everything um, today as it relates to strategic planning. Any other questions? All right. I'll see you guys on Thursday.